What's up, Footland? It's Tuesday, and that means it is waivers. And given the landscape of the running back situation, this is a very important show. Stay tuned. We got some smoke, some fire. Break down that incredible Monday night game. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, enjoy the show. Brace yourself oh. for an existential question. <laughs> Has your butt been having enough fun lately? If not, then it's time to start using SeatGeek. I'm not sure that's any of your business. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is my business is you going to awesome live events with SeatGeek. We actually just did this. Yes, we my, did. We took the whole studio to the... Uh, the Packers game where one of us was super happy at the end of that game, but we use SeatGeek. SeatGeek is amazing. It is so beloved by butts everywhere. They've made it the highest rated ticketing app, whether it's concerts, baseball, basketball, football, festivals, anything else. SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple, and you can get $20 off your first purchase with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. That's promo code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Download the app today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are so nasty, I'm your host today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by 90s dad extraordinaire, Jason Moore. So nasty. You're a, you're a nasty 90s dad. Ooh, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't want to put those two things together. Yeah, there's uh, that's no. that's no bueno. So no, I am. Uh, I I think the '90s dad is is All gone. Right. This is just who I am now. Who your favorite '90s dad was? Uh, oh, it's got to be Tim Allen. Oh, of you course. I mean, come on, it's it's Papa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was my dad. Welcome into the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We are joined by the e, cardboard bear extraordinaire, <laughs> but. But Aww. we have another person on this show. He's so type A, he couldn't stay away <laughs> and rest for too long. Andy Holloway, the fearless host of the podcast, he is back. Welcome back, Andy. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. It's good to be back on the show. Doctor's orders, keep away from that goatee. That's all yeah. I... <laughs> Yeah. That's the instructions <laughs> I have. Smart doctors. Smart doctors. They, they uh, you know... <laughs> Lock, lock me up. <laughs> I mean, you are on Zoom for me, and um, that goatee still to yeah. high definition. <laughs> How comfortable this. are you right now? I mean, at the same time, I'm sitting here. I shaved my face for a Halloween costume I never got to wear. So uh, facial hair disruption for the show, but uh, excited to be back. And I uh, miss you guys. Appreciate all the, the thoughts and prayers from everybody out there in the Foot Clan. Uh, my son is doing well. Everybody else is healthy. That's great. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk some football today. And somehow um, Andy is going to host the show from over there. I'm pushing the buttons. So the show may be a little discombobulated today, but we're going to do our best. I, I just want to let the people know I was willing to not host the show. I mean, I was, I was told I was hosting the show. <laughs> so I mean, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh, wink, wink, wink. Uh, I think it's been reported, and you guys need to confirm this for me. It's been reported that the Chiefs won last night. Is that factual? Did they win the game, they, or, uh, or did they lose? Well, they, they, they won on paper, and they lost in their hearts and in the hearts of America. The Chiefs seem like they're gone. The, the the great Chiefs with the awesome offense and the 50 points – and 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 the Hall of Fame quarterback, what what is happening? It's very sad. I don't know if this is just Holy the crap. If it's one of those things where you go to the Super Bowl, they put a great game plan together, and all of a sudden it becomes a blueprint. You know, because you see a lot of what's happened in the Super Bowl happening this this year. Or if it's just offensive struggles. I mean, there's a there's a number of things we could get into. Patrick Mahomes' QBR was nineteen point three. 19.3. <laughs> I mean, Whoa. that's 
I mean, I watched the game and it, it, it does get in your head. Like, and if it's in our head, it's in their head. Like now it's a thing, right? It's not just yes. a bad game. Even though they managed to win, it's a thing now. And it impacts Travis Kelsey, who had a disastrous game for fantasy. It impacts the entire offense. And then even expectations for players, you know, Jason, I know, you know, you have a couple of IR running backs with Clyde and with uh, David Montgomery both set to come back. It's like, what are your expectations for Clyde when this offense isn't in the red zone as often as it has been before? And, you know, what we saw from uh, Derek Gore and Daryl Williams. And they it feels like they're just experimenting now to try to get themselves back on track, and it hasn't happened. Yeah, it seems like they need Clyde back. Um, and they need actually to get things going with the offensive line. They need to catch the balls when it hits them in the hands instead of popping it up to the defenders. There, there, there's so much. But in the end, and I, I know we've this has been said before, and obviously last night it didn't come true, but I'll continue – to say what the truth is, I will trust the talent of Patrick Mahomes and the the coaching mind um, of Andy Reid. I'm going to trust that they will get it figured out. I mean, if they have a bad season, okay, they're still going to be fine. They're not going to be the Jets. Um, and and eventually, they. I mean, do we think that they're never going to get back to being you know a really powerful offense? No, I don't. I don't think anybody believes that. Yeah, it was a it was a weird game. The weird season continues. They are four and four. The Giants on the other side dealing with an injury to a wide receiver every three plays, it seems like. Yeah. Sterling Shepard goes out with the quad. Tony left and then came back and then pretended like he didn't remember going to the locker room. Galladay hasn't been there in forever. Yeah, I mean, what it, was that? What was – yeah, because again, this quote of he – didn't recall going to the locker room for just the minimizing it, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, it was super bizarre. But Devonte Booker came through with a with a decent game. You know, he five, looks all right. Yeah, it, we we've seen this. You know, from from the Giants last year, you had Wayne Gallman for a stretch. I think Devonta Freeman had a couple games, but like the backup running backs for the Giants, they they get yards over a hundred yards from scrimmage for Devonte Booker. Unfortunately, no no touchdowns. My incredible. Start of the week, Evan Engram, oh, Jason, no. oh, <laughs> Jason, gosh. your incredible 15 Ooh. yards and a touchdown. Uh huh. I was uh -huh. so, you don't know how happy I was when Kyle, when Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph got the touchdown. I was not going to let you get away with the process. I was, <laughs> <laughs> Evan Ingram is part of the process. And then he got the stupid touchdown and bailed people out. Um, and, uh, might get traded today. Probably won't. Uh, do you expect any trades to go through today of any kind of fantasy relevance? The, the trade deadline as of we're, we're recording right now, it's uh four o'clock Eastern is the trade deadline. It's the morning right now. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think the Ingram to Packers one makes, makes sense the way the Cardinals acquired Zach Ertz. That one, that one makes logical sense. Tunyon out for the year. Um, you know, you, you look at this season with Aaron Rodgers as a team and you say, this might be our last hurrah with him, an opportunity to push for that title. So that one makes logical sense, but most of the time it's um, it's like the segment coming up. It's more smoke than fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. Well, I mean, Mike, I mean, it is, it is possible that the Chiefs try to move on from Patrick Mahomes, I guess, today as well. <laughs> <laughs> According to uh, some of the talking heads out there, he's done. Did you see the stat that they're committing a turnover on a quarter of their drives? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the key. I mean, that's the difference. It, it That's really, really bad. But uh, the other stat that was shocking was just the, the, the yards per play mm -hmm. was down around where the Jets have been. So even discounting the turnovers. But uh, again, I think they'll get it corrected. All right, where there's smoke, there's fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Number one here, smoke fire. Uh, I feel like this player personally attacked my, um, I guess, doubting of his ability on the field this past week. But Michael Carter, the New York Jets, huge week, 14 targets. Mike brought it up on the show last week when we were previewing these matchups that Mike White throws the ball to the running back, which based on, like, when Sam Darnold had success this year and when other quarterbacks have success, 
throwing the ball to your running back is not the worst thing you can do. I mean, nine for 95 for Michael Carter. All the yards count after the catch for these quarterbacks, and he also went 15 for 77 and one on the ground. They won the ball game. He was number one on the week after a number 19 finish. Two weeks before, you know, before the bye, number 23. It seems disrespectful to speculate on smoke here, doesn't it? I th- yeah, I think you can call this uh, a temporary fire. I mean, long term, I think Michael Carter has value. Where if you you know, follow the the peripherals, the usage, the snap count, everything was trending in the right direction, which is why we were highlighting Michael Carter back in like you know week four of okay, it's it's time to get him off the waiver wire because whoever drafted Michael Carter was very disappointed over the first three to four weeks of the season, but it was moving in the direction that he now has value. Will the will Zach Wilson see what Mike White has done it with the with his time on the field and say, yeah, I need to utilize these guys more. That remains to be seen, but it's going to be Mike White on Thursday against the Indianapolis Colts. So I think you've got to stay in these flames here with, with Michael Carter and yet throwing to the, when you're running back is one of your best players on, on offense, which Michael Carter, not a overly athletically gifted player, but he's very elusive. Like he was a, an absolute stud breaking tackles back in North Carolina and that's shown up this year already. He's uh, sixth in pro football focus, their elusive ranking. So you needed to get him more touches. And like Corey Davis was out. Jamison Crowder, he's a good wide receiver. But besides that, you know, maybe Mims, maybe some of these other guys. But no, so feature Michael Carter in the passing game. And it turned into a victory. And I, I can't imagine that the Jets are going to stray too far from that game plan on Thursday. No, I, I agree. I, I think this is more fire than not. And while it certainly um, could be temporary, it could be as long as Mike White is um, the quarterback and that's it, I don't think And it's... how long is that, Jason? Oh, how long is that? That's going to be one more week. That's the truth. Um, I hope it's the rest of the season because, man, that would just be fun. I believe Andy's... It's not fun for a Jets fan. Sure it is if he's playing well. I don't, I You're don't telling know. me as a Jets fan that you – would you prefer to go with the quarterback that is better or would you g- prefer to go with the quarterback who was drafted higher? I uh, Yeah, I understand I would prefer to go with the quarterback who's playing better, but to know you wasted the number two overall pick or what f- would at least feel like it. There's no chance I would be happy with Mike White starting if I'm the Jets because winning a game or two this year that you're not expected to win – I mean, it was his first start, and we've also seen this before where, right. you know, your first start as a pro, things go okay, then you're game scripted. And I was going to ask you if Corey Davis's return would have any hypothetical impact on ceiling for Michael Carter, but I imagine not tremendously. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that would have a huge effect. Uh, going forward, though, after the Mike White uh, short saga is over, which I think will be another week. I think Michael Carter will still have value. He was the running back 36 prior to this week on the season. That included a bye week in there. Um, and Tevin Coleman is gone. You know what I mean? Like, like they, they, they stopped doing that, which is <laughs> great news. Um, and he wasn't doing no. a ton, but I think he had about six opportunities a game. Just Those stop are doing no, that. Just, just stop. stop it. No, just look, stop it. Look at the problem, identify it, and fix it. And they did. They said, oh, Tevin Coleman's problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think Michael Carter is not going to, certainly not going to be a, I don't view him as a league winner or, you know, the number one running back that he Could was be a this week last winner, week. Though. Sure. He certainly was this last week, but I think he will be a uh, usable fantasy asset the rest of the season. I think that this next name, so we all went, we all went fire on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this next name was a complete setup. I mean, it's ridiculous to even have him in here. Because I think we know the answer, but <laughs> Michael Pittman Jr. Smoke fire. He was the number two wide receiver last week, number seven the week before. Michael Pittman. Before I let Mike just revel and dance or do whatever he's going to do, he is a perfect example of the external metrics eventually adding up to fantasy success. Because early in the year, he just wasn't scoring touchdowns, but all of these external metrics said, "Hey, he should be scoring." this many fantasy points, but he wasn't. And then it's all kind of caught up in the last couple of weeks. He's on pace for 90, 11, 90, and 8. That's a 16-game pace. That's a 16-game pace. So he's obviously 
this is an obvious fire one. And he's also a young enough player to where that, that narrative of trust building and okay, you throw him this ball and he, he makes a play. So I'm going to throw him that ball again next week. Those things add up to, to pure fire for Michael Pittman. For Michael Pittman, what he has done, just want to, to put the context out there. If he are, is to continue the pace that he's on, which that honestly, that's, that is a taller task because he's, been absolutely dominant for the last month or so but if he continues this pace that 16 game pace uh, that Andy gave out the second year wide receivers that hit those numbers and better Sterling Sharp Isaac Bruce Marquise Colston Larry Fitz AJ Green Odell Beckham like he is currently sitting in a very elite category I don't expect by the end of the year we're looking at Michael Pittman going oh we got it we have the next A.J. Green. We have the next Larry Fitz. But he's right now the wide receiver 13 on the season. I think he is – look, he's safer and safer by the day. T.Y. Yeah. Hilton's health and and establishing himself in this offense, it's just not Red their – Red targets. Yes, Carson Wentz is, is like, oh, yeah, I guess. I guess this uh, Michael Pittman is an ascending player. I should I should target him more. Yeah, I mean, he he is doing what you hoped he would do, which is establish dominance. Yeah. And last year, it was all five-yard dra five drag routes over and over and over and over and over. P. Rivers just checking the ball down. There are only three, uh, you, you know, Devontae Adams and, and Pity City um, are the only players that rank in the top 18 of receptions among wide receivers in all three areas of the field. So you, the, the deep shots, the intermediate shots, the short, um, you know, manufactured touches. He's getting them all, so I think it's complete fire. It's going to last. And um, are you trying to trade high, or are you holding him for the long term? Um, I'm holding him for the long term. I got him a couple of places. I I, I don't think that I want to trade for him after a double touchdown game. Um, it's just going to cost too much. Gotcha. Yeah, I know you cashed in in one league, Mike, with with the trading high philosophy, and you got. I had I think, to. I incredible had value for him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he he's delivering um, mm -hmm. on, on the promise, which is what you want to see. And uh, hopefully it does continue. So triple fire for both players. Yes. Yeah. It's a very hot day in the Traeger, oh. Traeger segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason brought me some. Uh, Jason and, and his wife were kind enough to bring us some deliciously wood-fired uh, mm -hmm. grill meals Ooh. while we were dealing with uh, all of the mayhem of this past week. And, uh, well, no regrets um, on having friends like that. Uh, that was where there's smoke, there's fire, presented by Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting line and make every game day more delicious. Head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover just how simple wood-fired cooking can be. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Well, we've got news to talk about. The 49ers. This is unfortunate because he's been getting a ton of work. Um, I saw some people getting out of control with his dynasty value, which is another story. But 49ers coach said Kyle Shanahan, or I'm sorry, 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan said Elijah Mitchell Emerged from the Sunday game with a rib injury. Uh, will be limited this week. They're going to limit Debo to maintain that calf uh, issue. The you calf know, was a the calf was a real problem for him this last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it was like yeah. you just watch and you're like, mm, man, he is he's limited. He is super <laughs> limited out there with uh, his monster game. What, what was he limited to? Like 170 yards or something? Yeah, I but mean, he didn't. He stepped the, out. Though. He stepped out of bounds. I'm sure. Of that. No, Oh, there he is. Yeah, so uh, Elijah, l go look at Debo and do what he did with his uh, calf injury uh, with your ribs. Uh, Debo now, is averaging 117 yards a game. Holy crap. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, um, related to this, George uh, or Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you. The practice window is now open. Um, that does not mean he will play this week. Um, I am of the mindset that if he were to be activated this week and, and Elijah Mitchell is active this week, that it's, I think it's going to be Elijah Mitchell's oh, yeah, I run think Wilson, game. Yes, I don't, I don't yes. think Jeff Wilson comes in and overtakes that. In fact, I think that he comes in and more overtakes the, the, uh, Jermichael hasty role 
and it will be the one two with Elijah Mitchell and Jeff Wilson. So Jeff Wilson is someone will you know you should look at picking up, but don't don't go crazy because I don't think he gets activated this week, even if the they have opened the practice windows. They have twenty one days to activate him to the active roster. George Kittle was also activated into the the twenty uh, one day practice regimen. It sounds like he should Kittle, play. Kittle may play this week. Are we comfortable just throwing him right back in the lineup? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think he's going to play against Arizona. Derrick Henry, the news, six to ten weeks. They signed Adrian Peterson. Um, did you guys get the, the Adrian Peterson news live during yesterday's show? Not the signing, no. Okay, so some speculation. Um, yeah, I mean, the replacement, they didn't work anybody else out. They brought Adrian Peterson right in and – you know, as as much as it is, I guess, comical to bring up the age of Adrian Peterson, the truth is his running style. Yes. And it fits perfectly. So I'm not surprised they didn't work anybody else out unless you were going to go make a, a blockbuster trade for another downhill runner. Peterson can come in and, you know, I know today's a waiver show, but just like quick reaction. Like, is this somebody that you because of the identity of the offense that you're going to be spending big on quick reaction is I think he will be fantasy relevant and I won't be spending big as a guy that's going to come in and take over. You still have McNichols there that, that could be more involved than we expect, but the fact that they quickly went in and brought in a, as close as you could do is like trying to find a replica systematically uh, of the player that you lost and the fact that the window is short six to ten weeks means that I think they're going to pretty much try to keep the same offense to, to uh, the best they can which they won't be able to run with the success of Henry so I, I like Adrian Peterson he would be uh, probably my number one pickup of the guys that are widely available I would I'm, I'm uh, prioritizing Mick Nichols over Adrian Peterson the yeah, they they want to keep things the same, and Adrian Peterson, like time and time again, has has shown that if you doubt Adrian Peterson, that's usually the wrong side of the argument to be on. But I mean, he's over thirty six years old. Oh, he man. he could not get a a job prior to this. It took a a devastating injury. So if the run game slows down, then and McNichols has already shown he will be active in the the passing game for the Tennessee Titans and and he'll he will see an uptick in carries as well so that's where I lean that that offense has to one. change it has to change enough that I slightly prefer McNichols carry blazing game will get work as well their fullback who has seen work in the past when McNichols has been limited so it is a tough call there um I think if you need a running back I mean he's an option for you we'll get into it yeah Christian McCaffrey Matt Rule has been Ooh. elusive Ooh. uh I think the last report I had read was he might play this week. He also might play next week. How do you react to that, Jason? Uh, to me, that says he's not playing this week and that they're hopeful he could play next week. Um, so I, I I would plan to be without him for at least one, uh, potentially two weeks. I mean, we saw last year this team take it very, very easy with the injury, and every time that they have brought him back, he's been re re-injured. Um, so they're they're going to wait till he's fully healthy. Um, if he's activated, he's right back in your lineup, um, and you're just going to have to deal with it if he gets re-injured. If he doesn't, he'll be great for fantasy. In the meantime, um, you're probably going to have a game or two left at least of of Chuba having th the workload there. It, this pay. year's this year is a little bit different that they're, the Panthers are competitive. Right, they're, last they're year, four and four. They were able to just shut them down. Yes. Um, funny question that my son actually asked me this week, and I don't know if I had a quick, quick draw answer. Who's the number one running back with Henry out? Who's the number one? Who, who would you want more than anybody else right now? Cause it was like, I went through the gauntlet in my head of, you know, Kamara and cook and Najee, you know, to me, is, that's the answer. Najee. I, I think it's Najee. Uh, okay. I, I was, I was actually doing the same thought experiment the other day. Um, and there's, there's a four pack that are kind of in the same tier for me, which is, um, Alvin Kamara, Najee, uh, I would put Jonathan Taylor there oh, and, yeah, yeah. and Ezekiel yes. Elliott. And you, you might want to throw in uh, Austin Not Eckler Cook? as well. Not Dalvin Cook? Oh, sure. Dalvin, I mean, it, the thing is, is Dalvin's injury is similar to, to Christian McCaffrey. It's like these guys are great, 
But if they're it's not crazy. available, and obviously he he just played this last week uh, poorly, um, yeah, the the tier the top tiers feels like it's gone. Like I don't view Dalvin in a different tier than those other guys anymore. David Montgomery improving every day, according to the budget magician. Uh, team is working through his status. He's eligible to come off the IR this week. I uh, believe he could be back this week if they did not have the bye next week. It make the fact that they've got the bye week next week says to me, if I if I'm the Bears, Khalil Herbert's running well. I'm going to just rest him up. You're still you know somewhat competing. You're you're not you know a winless team here. Um, Two more weeks, bring him back full strength week 11, going into your fantasy playoffs. I think he'll be good, but I would doubt that he is active this week. Mike McCarthy confirmed that uh, or or expects Dak to play this week. That's good. They held him out. It was best case scenario for them. They managed to win the ball game without Dak and playing it super cautious. You know, we saw them on hard knocks and how frustrated he was in different ch times not getting to play. I'm sure it was frustrating for him. But he'll be back against the Broncos. Sean Payton confirmed Jameis Winston suffered a torn ACL and an MCL uh, injury. Taysom Hill is still progressing through the concussion protocol. This has been a, you know, you get these concussions that you're like, okay, the guy's going to come back right away. Taysom Hill has been a longer-term concussion, but we expect him to start if he's off of pr protocol, right? Yes. Yeah, if he clears protocol, he'll he'll be their starter. I think there's very little question about that unless they were to trade for someone in the next few hours. Um otherwise it's Trevor Simeon who would get the start. The Bucks beater. The Bucks beater. He didn't look so bad. He's, he's I been always okay. like Trevor Simeon. He's been okay in flashes. Like he's he's a great backup quarterback. Yeah, like he's a show. poor man's case keenum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's not dead rich? He's a poor man's Case Keenum. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly oh. what Trevor Simeon is. He dresses up as Case Keenum for Halloween. Now, 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 to be fair, a poor man's peak Case Keenum, not, oh, okay. not current. Okay. All right, not current Case Keenum because that would be ooh, that'd be rough. Oh my gosh! Now is peak Case Keenum the same as basement Kirk Cousins? That's what exactly is what it is. Yes, it's poor man's Kirk Cousins. You so understand a, the scale? Yeah, it's okay. it's, it's poor, poor man's Cousins <laughs> is Keenum. Poor man Keenum is Simeon. That's right. And then poor man Simeon is uh, what? Uh, Zach Wilson? I think that's Gardner oh. Minch. Oh, oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll take Zach Wilson on that. All right, Packers wide receiver updates. Lazard returned to practice. Devontae Adams expected to return to practice Thursday. Still needs to clear the protocol. MVS designated to return. Um, not back yet, but they are hopefully getting some reinforcements in the wide receiver room. Corey Davis Ingram. has a chance to Come play on, week Evan nine. Evan oh, Ingram, Ingram could go there. Please. Yes. Just what we need, more Ingram hype, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Chris Carson. Boy, the reports on Carson have been all over the map. Yeah. It was um, almost like this was the response to, like, there was a lot of rumor that they're going to shut him down for the year, that he would miss this season because, obviously, a neck injury, it's, it c can be serious. It's kind of out of their hands. And then, and then so, then Pete Carroll comes out right after hearing that and says that Chris Carson wants to go for it next week. And so, maybe he's back soon. Maybe. Or maybe he's gone for the year. <laughs> like, this is his one. Like, I don't remember the last time where you're genuinely on one player going, he could be back this week or done for the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, wild. my son literally saw the news and he's like, oh, do I drop K Chris Carson now that he's probably going to be out for the year? I'm like, no, don't do that quite yet. Uh, any other news that you guys view as uh, important to mention before we head towards the waivers uh the logan thomas news but we'll talk about that in the waivers so i sure. i think we're good before we get to the waivers want to thank today's sponsors hello fresh with hello fresh you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door stay out of stupid grocery stores and having to pull out your recipe list and your shopping order just have everything show up have it be easy have it be pre-packaged pre-measured come in a nice little disposable container where you could throw everything away and keep it clean the holidays can be too hectic you know hello fresh makes things simple 
Their ingredients are great. They are fresh. That's why it's HelloFresh. HelloFresh. Over 50 menu and market items to choose from every single week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, gourmet, family options. Uh, the, the, we, we have not only uh, had HelloFresh sponsor us forever, but we've used them forever. I love HelloFresh. It makes it so easy. You can't beat the value. Even at full price, it's over 30% cheaper than grocery stores. And with this holiday deal, it's time to try it for even less. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. Use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. And use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. We want to thank Head & Shoulders for sponsoring today's show. Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology is never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection even between washes. They've been you know, bringing you the never not working segment on Thursdays where we're, you know, we're, we're diving deeper, taking a different look at the fantasy football game. But speaking of never not working, did you see our friend, Pro Football Hall of Fame, you know, our, one of our friends, Troy Palomalu, mm. he's teamed up with Head & Shoulders and he's freelancing on the website Fiverr? Nice. He's got he's got gigs on there because Troy is never not working. Never not <laughs> working. Look for a limited time. Troy is offering up his services. He'll be available to hire. That's right. Fulfilling real gigs. You can actually hire him today for things like, you know, hair care tips, unboxing videos, voiceover services. He'll develop an epic soundtrack for you. And there's even... A customized tattoo option. <laughs> Troy is doing some serious work. He's never work. not working over there. It's a rare opportunity to work with a true NFL legend, but it's only available for a limited time, and Troy is only taking a limited number of requests, so act fast. Act fast. You could check out Troy's profile at Fiverr.com slash Troy Polamalu. That's Fiverr with two R's. Again, Fiverr.com slash Troy Polamalu. Very cool opportunity. Check it out. Hire Troy today. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm still reeling over the Derrick Henry news. So much, uh, so many yeah, implications. It's devastating. You can react to the news on uh, through the waiver wire or through trades. And uh, just a, a reminder, make sure that you are up to date with what in the world is going on. Get the Sleeper app and subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel because you don't want to miss something. Because it might impact those bids for the waiver wire. Um, what I did yesterday, I mean, we, we have a keeper league, and I did something that made me throw up. Um, I did something that made me throw up. Well, we <laughs> <laughs> and your throwing up made me throw up. Mm -hmm. You see, and we worked together to prov we worked together to cause pain. Puke pals, mm -hmm. puke pals. Um, it's like the but, like, almost like the opposite of collusion, where we both hate. <laughs> we both, we hate, both this. hate ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, I have a team that's that's in contention in a keeper league, and I lost Derrick Henry. And it's like, what do I do? I'm, I, have, I have very little fab. Do I go to the – because this is the situation people out there might be in where some of these big names on waivers, you can't compete for them. You're not going to be able to spend whatever – you know, <laughs> we're talking about Adrian Peterson, but he might be more than you've got. And I had to make a trade, and I had to make a disgusting trade because I had to stay in contention. I had to throw – uh, a keeper in Justin Jefferson along with Derrick Henry, two of my favorite players in the world where I was lined up to win and go trade them for Dalvin Cook because I didn't have a running back. And sometimes you have to swallow the puke, the pride. Oh. I don't know. Oh. You have to just keep it down. You have to keep <laughs> it down. And it was like I had to do it. And Jason on the other side, it's like, you know, he he's he's maneuvering for keeper position and picks and you know, just based on the landscape of the league, and it was, um, it was something that made all of us feel gross. Keeper leagues are so fun, Foot Clan. If you're not in a keeper league this off season, you know, FootClanLeagues.com. We we got tons of redraft, tons of dynasty. Both are awesome. My favorite is a keeper because of this situation. Like, you can have teams. I've I've lost everybody. I've lost Christian McCaffrey. I've lost. David Montgomery, I've lost Clyde Edwards Alaire. Sterling Shepard keeps looking like he could be something and never plays. Um and and so my my season is kind of derailed. We're coming up to the trade deadline and so I'm starting to now I can make these moves where Derrick Henry is is worthless. Except to me, he's worth I'm, a lot. I'm looking at keeper options now and trying to build a uh you know, 
uh, a, a juggernaut for next year. And so it's just really fun. And I would I would encourage people either take your if you've got a long term league, you, like that's how our keeper started is we had a league that was the same group playing year after year after year, uh, but it was just a redraft. Just make it a little keep something because it allows yeah. for next year's pick trading, um, a little bit more depth of strategy, more stuff in the offseason. It's just fun. All right. Coming back off the bye, the Raiders and the Ravens. And then we've got more bye weeks this week uh, of relevant players, the Buccaneers, Lions, Seahawks, and the Washington football team. Let's Thank start with the goodness Washington's on bye. I'm so Heal thrilled up. that Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson are on by, and you don't have that temptation, and they can have exactly a week to just heal up, get right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, top wide receiver drop candidates. You know, I heard you guys talk about it yesterday, and I think Jason summed it up so well in saying, you know, the Calvin Ridley situation literally could be everything from rest of season to rest of career to two weeks. You know, the statement he came out with, he's going to focus on his mental health before he returns to the field. We don't know what that looks like. Are you in a, you know, people are asking, do you drop Calvin Ridley? And I, I can't imagine not waiting a little bit before I did that. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I would not drop Calvin Ridley unless I absolutely had to. If you've got bye weeks and injuries galore and your hand is forced, whatever. But in general, do what you can to avoid dropping him. People asking about Devonta Smith, Mike. Um, not a lot of games of relevance. I think there's been three double-digit games on the year. I know this because I had to look at him yesterday in a trade. And people asking, should you drop him? Because it's been so infrequent that you you kind of feel with the name, or at least I do, that, oh, okay, he's a flexible guy, but production hasn't really matched that sentiment, but he is young. Yeah, I would be holding on to him. You know, the last week against the Detroit Lions, that's a that's a throwout game. I mean, he played if you look at the just his box score, all you're doing is hunting that. Sixty eight percent of the snaps, three targets. It's because the Eagles were establishing it and it was dominant. Uh so four throw, rushing touchdowns. Yeah, throw that game out. Other than that, he's on the field all the time. He's seeing volume. It hasn't always connected. But, you know, two weeks ago was a game of 5 for 61. That's a very usable game, a 7 for 77. So, And Jalen I'm, Rager is injured. Now. Yes, yes, that's a good point. Jalen Rager had to leave the field. I'm holding on to Devontae Smith. If you're trying to pick your spots with him, I'd be picking games that they have to compete, like you're saying, you know, where they're not blowing people out. But Jalen Hurts has to throw the ball downfield. Um, if you needed a reminder why you should have cut Allen Robinson or Robbie Anderson, they did it this past week. Allen Robinson is averaging three for 33. That That's what he's averaging. That's Allen Robinson's average at the wide receiver position is three catches for 33 yards. Um, he's a drop. And then Sterling yeah. Shepard, you know, can, do you keep waiting with Kenny Galladay? I mean, I feel like you have to there too because this team is so beat up that Kenny G could be relevant immediately. Yes, Kenny Galladay is definitely a hold. Sterling Shepard, at least find out what the injury news is. I, uh, unfortunately, you probably – won't get a full picture of that before waivers run. Uh, maybe we do, uh, but I'm going to hold on to both of them. Assuming, You're holding on to Shepard too? Yeah. Assuming that we don't know the news by the time waivers go through tomorrow in your league, um, I would probably move on from Shepard if you need a player to play. Obviously, if he's on your bench, if if you don't need a wide receiver, then well, that's fine. Wait till he's healthy. He had seven targets in like 20 seconds before going down again, but this is – soft tissue issue that the quad is not unrelated to the hamstring. This is just, they do have the bye week in week 10. So yeah, if they've got the bye week in week 10 and you're not playing them in week nine, pr probably. Okay. Then it, you can probably, then yes, I, I would move on. All right. Uh, let's look at wide receiver options. Who are your guys' favorites this week? You know, Rashad Bateman coming off the bye could be sitting on your waiver wire in about half a leagues. It seems like he is. Who, who are your favorite pickups? Yeah, my, my two favorite, uh, Rashad Bateman is, is one of them, but my actual favorite is Devontae Parker. Um, Will Fuller is not healthy. Tua has been slinging it around, has been throwing it well, and Devontae Parker was extremely involved. We When we were watching this Sunday, it was like 
we wanted to know how will this affect Jalen Waddle? How will it? F how you know what? Who we weren't considering in the equation was Devontae Parker. He had 11 targets, was eight for 85, made some great catches. Um, this coming week is against Houston. I would be happy to pick up and play Devontae Parker. Um, you have a defense that's reeling, an offense that hopefully can still get better as the season goes on, and um, and then two weeks from now against the the New York Jets. I I just think Devontae Parker is a a solid wide receiver, and Tua is doing enough for fantasy where I'm not as afraid of the receiving options as I was at the very beginning going into the season with Tua in tow. There's a couple situations I'm looking at uh, for, for wide receiver waivers this week. Like short-term, one and done, Jamison Crowder is available in uh, the majority of leagues. It's the short week. He gets the Colts on Thursday. He saw nine targets that turned into eight for 84. But he's interesting if Corey Davis is out. Like if Corey Davis is back on the field, we have no idea what Mike White will uh, do when he has all of those weapons available, so I would be less comfortable picking him up. Then long-term, Jason. Yes. Brandon, oh, no. I, you, that's, I'm doing it. I knew I you were going to bring that. Number. I am doing it because I think it is the right thing to do. Brandon Ayuk, he's – pretty heavily rostered but available in about 40 percent of leagues the numbers were going up for him the last couple weeks the peripherals he ends up being on the field a ton 88 percent of the snaps Debo has the the calf thing that look it's not stopping Debo from production but you know maybe the snaps will be a little bit more limited for Debo you finally had his coach Kyle Shanahan saying something positive about Brandon Ayuk after shocking after months of just torching him in the press whenever he had the chance. he Kyle Shanahan did not miss a moment that he could dunk on Brandon Ayuk, and this week he didn't. So He, he said I he, quote, played his butt off. Yes. He had 88% of snaps, more than Debo Samuel. He had seven targets, and no, I am not picking up Brandon yeah, Ayuk. Yeah, I think, you know, what's hard is I've I've been dealing with this too. Like, he's on the notes of like, do I go for this guy this week? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think okay. the risk is not worth the reward. Uh, we've been here before. He played 86% of snaps in week three. He was four for 37. He played 88% this past week. He was four for 45. It's it's alluring because of Brandon Ayuk's 2020 season. Exactly. And that's why Robbie was alluring for so many weeks, and that's why Allen Robinson was alluring. So it's hard to say no to the peripherals, but I think, you know, you got Arizona this week. And then the then Rams. The Rams. Um, I don't know. Give me it, a game inside the top 50 before I jump in maybe. And yeah, if, I, if Debo, when Debo Samuel gets injured, I will pick Brandon Ayuk up. But I don't think you need to do that in anticipation of that. And this last week, while he did have more snaps, more targets, George Kittle was gone. So George Kittle, we expect to be back. True. Two, two brutal matchups this in the next two weeks that I'm probably not playing. Wide receiver 38, Andy. Oh, he was so <laughs> close. <laughs> I was guessing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, hey, if you're dart throwing, I mean, I don't know if there's a difference between picking up him and, uh, I don't know, Crowder, but I'd definitely go Bateman for the upside and being more integrated into the offense versus Ayuk right now. If you haven't had any shares of Ayuk, you can pick him up. <laughs> okay, you can, you, <laughs> but if you've, ha if you've had the experience, don't hurt yourself again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because – uh, well, yeah, we don't need to talk about him anymore. How about a guy with 12 targets? Jamal Agnew getting more and more involved in the Jacksonville offense. Um, any interest in Agnew, who's available in almost every league, went in, six for 38 and a touchdown, but the target totals are kind of eye-popping. In a deeper league, sure, I I can be interested in him. I mean, before the bye week, five for 78. 12 targets turning into six receptions and 38 yards is – that makes me want to vomit. Now he caught a touchdown, so he was, you know, very relevant for fantasy. And the the target volume since DJ Chark uh, went down with the the season ending injury, Agnew is seeing a bunch of targets. I don't know why that this is how they're choosing <laughs> to run the offense when you have Lavisca Chenault and you have Marvin Jones. It's very bizarre. But yeah, in in a in a deeper like a fourteen teamer, sure. Then I'm I'll be interested in Jamal Agnew. I think yeah, it has a lot. Go ahead, Jay. It, it's really tough. He's got Buffalo this week, so he's not someone that I'm picking up to play this week. And if that's the case, he's not a stash alert. He's a pick up and play 
um, in the right matchup, and and this week isn't it. So I'm I'm kind of not. I'll, I'll watch Jamal Agnew. I'll keep an eye on him, but I I won't be starting him this week. There's there's a different player I would I would happily start. Okay, this week his um, name better not be Russell Gage. He, no, it is not because Russell Gage played a whole lot of snaps. And you would not know that by the box score because he didn't do anything. No, it's Van Jefferson. Yes, um, Van <laughs> Van Jefferson. Um, he, he's he's a big play option, right? You can always very very low floor here, um, but a very high ceiling because he can take an eighty yard bomb touchdown at any point. He's playing on an offense that is clicking, and he's going up against Tennessee, which is a great matchup for the passing game. He had six targets, three for 88 last week, 84% of snaps. I mean, that was just barely behind Woods and Cup. Yeah, snaps He's, are up the last two He weeks. is on the field. He is getting targets. It's a great matchup. So, Van Jefferson, it's tough to want to pick up and play someone you know is the third wide receiver on that team. But if you're going to do it, do it with a team that's on fire. Well, I'll, I'll caveat it as well. Like it, You can have slightly more confidence in Van Jefferson just based on the news, and I don't know if you guys got into it yesterday, but the – you know, Deshaun Jackson is pursuing a trade. Right. And so, you know, this was a player where it's a lot harder to think Jefferson will have a big play when one of the big plays could be Deshaun Jackson, which it was a few of the weeks. So that's a that's still a, a risky pickup and play, but you can do it on a good offense. Like you said, Russell Gage had zero targets, uh, even without Calvin Ridley. Honestly, the departure of Ridley, it could, you know, they, they didn't have an opportunity to game plan to be without him, but it could hurt you know, the production of Kyle Pitts because he had people over. If you watch the game, he had people over the top all the time. And that mm -hmm. was something that Ridley was unlocking for the offense. So, you know, you do get to go back to the drawing board and get Gage involved. And are you, know, you interested in Tajay Sharp, who he was the wide receiver that actually had production for the Falcons at which this could be a breaking news moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Tajay Sharp is on the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, breaking news. <laughs> like, and no. six, six targets, five for 58. If Ridley is gone, somebody on that team besides Kyle Pitts will catch passes. Maybe the ceiling is not Oh, I, I'd rather be dead. No, yeah, I'd rather, I would I'd, rather, rather. <laughs> I'd rather be dead. I mean, Zach, what, it'd be Zacchaeus or Sharp or Gage one week or Hurst one week. It will be a roulette of pain that 100%. I do not want to endure. Yeah, one hundred percent. But you I, did make a compelling case. I mean, you you did your best. You broke the news that he's on the team, which well, we're is step one. About, we're talking about Jamal Agnew. <laughs> <laughs> we're going deep. You know, Jamal Agnew's getting targets because that offensive line. I mean, it sucks for Marvin Jones because he's obviously their best receiver, mm -hmm. but he is a player that like wins at like fifteen, twenty, twenty five yards, thirty yards down the field, and that's normally what we call the. Lawrence on his back time of the play. Sure. And it sucks because you just, if you connect on one of those, you know, deep passes, you're happy. But it's, it has not been fun trying to decide when to play Marvin Jones. That's for sure. Um, any other wide receivers you want to bring up? Will Fuller's not coming back, like you said. I don't know if you really want to stash him at this point with Parker healthy. Yeah, I, I don't, but he's a name at least worth bringing up. Michael Gallup, I don't, but he's a name worth bringing up. Dak back. Michael Gallup should be back soon as well. Um, so you can look on your waivers for those those kind of stash options. And obviously, Kadarius Toney, we didn't bring him up. He's rostered in most places, but... Um, he might be available. He might be available, and I would pick him up. All right, running back, waiver wire pickups. Um, you know, with Derrick Henry out, Miles Sanders out on IR. Maybe you spent up on Kenneth Gainwell, and now you're you're just Woof. finished cr crying. <sighs> um, it's funny because one of the deceptions of that game is the final snap yes. count totals, because Gain Gainwell had the last 14 carries of the game when the game was in hand and irrelevant, and it was like. Let's Handed see. to him by Gardner Minshew. <laughs> yeah, that, that shows you when when you're. You're giving given the ball by the backup quarterback. That means you are irrelevant. So, um, and then Alex Collins going on by. So, Michael Carter obviously smoke fire earlier today. If he's somehow there, you would make an investment of mm -hmm. a significant amount of fab. Yes. J.D. McKissick. Holden. This past week has been was kind of nuts for Washington. You do have a bye week coming up. 
I agree with the hold, but man, Jer did you guys talk about Jarrett Patterson getting so much work? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we went, we talked about it. Have it's interesting. I don't like J.D. McKissick to me is worth holding through the buy. Jarrett Patterson, he's probably on your waiver wire. So, the, like a question of do you pick up Patterson? Only in a really deep league would I make that move because that Never. it's it's a very speculative ad. Never that, would I pick up like, Jared Gibbs, Patterson. Gibson has a week off here. Let he was off the injury report. Let's see how he returns. Uh, I like I would project that Gibson will be back to his role in two weeks. There's no way that an extra week of rest gets less work for Gibson, but let's say it does. Let's say oh Patterson's just impressed the heck out of them so much. They're gonna give. They're gonna keep him on the field getting. 10 carries well he hold, just hold him through the bye where you can't play him and then tampa bay one of the hardest right. team. oh but it's okay because the week after that the carolina panthers who are actually the number one uh run defense so no i'm Jarrett patterson is not a guy you need to scoop up right now all right uh yeah he would be somebody who if gibson was actually out for the year or something yeah more interesting. dynasty more interesting. leagues certainly sure. make sure he's rostered um <clears throat> you guys chasing Derek gore from last night superstar <laughs> No. Superstar running back? No. Uh, grandson of the great Frank Gore? <laughs> not, may or may not be true. Um, yeah, I mean, so th there's two big names to me, uh, the way that I see it, or two big situations. Uh, it's the Eagles situation, and it's the Titans situation. You have to decide which situation you like better. The The Titans is more long-term. Um, right. Miles Sanders will be back in a couple of weeks, but during that stretch of weeks, I feel like the Boston Scott against the Chargers. Yeah, the situation run funnel. is is much much better. Um, and and Denver has a little bit of a run funnel after that. So personally, if I'm looking at my waiver wire, let's say you're in that situation where you've got an injured running back. There's plenty of them out there, but you expect them to get back, or you've got Gibson on by. Um, I'm going after Boston Scott ahead of Adrian Peterson. And who is ahead of Jeremy McNichols on my personal rankings. Boston Scott has actually had two good weeks in a row. Even, um, you know, the, the week prior, he's used around the goal line. Two carries inside the five two weeks ago. Two carries inside the five this past week. Um, and was the clear, clear-cut um, leader of the backfield for the beginning of this game. And while we have to realize, well, it was the Detroit Lions, he's not going to be as good good every week like you just said the the Los Angeles Chargers are 30th against fantasy points given up to the running back position so I think it's I think Boston Scott's going to be a really good play this week um I think I'm spending the most on Peterson okay um it's tough between the two I I understand the logic of of McNichols the passing game like the bar for McNichols to have an, a game that doesn't kill you like it's very low because of the receiving work the last time we saw Adrian Peterson, he was with Detroit last year. 3.9 a carry in Detroit. The previous two years with Washington looked all right. I know the age is insane, but I also know that this team is good, and I know this team's going to find its way to the goal line, and I think that's Adrian Peterson's job, and I think he's going to see some success and some relevance. So while I'm not going to destroy my team to acquire him, Look, it's slim pickings at running back, so I'm, I feel okay with how they're going to utilize him. And you know, it's six to ten weeks for Henry. It's really eight to ten. It could be, it could be the whole year. I mean, you're not seeing Henry return to any relevant part of the fantasy season. So you're telling me that the hypothetical starting running back for the Titans is available for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to take the shot now, Jason. You said that he's a higher, he's higher than McNichols for you as well. Yeah, I, I think they're going to put him in the Derrick Henry role, and I, I while he's super old, I think he's going to get it done. Um, now, it's a tough stretch for the next two weeks. Uh, it's, right. he's, he's not coming into a great matchup against the Los Angeles Rams, who just traded for Von Miller um, and have uh, you know the, the best defensive player in uh, uh, Arnold. Uh, what? Help Aaron me. Donald? Thank you, Aaron oh, Donald. I just, Arnold I want, Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, you know, that, Get that's the tough. quarterback. And then the week after is the New Orleans Saints, a very tough matchup. But yes. what you're saying is this is why 
I'm looking at Boston Scott over Adrian Peterson because I think it, you'll get better games the next couple weeks. Right. But if you need a rest of season option, I would go. Then I would go hard at Adrian Peterson ahead of McNichols. He'll have the role. I I trust Vrabel. I think every 20 time carries twenty carries on yes, average. Exactly, exactly. I think he will get the rock a ton. Uh, eighteen to twenty carries a game is kind of how I expect it to play out. Um, but then I'm glad Mike's here to just give the other side. It could not be. He, he could be the backup to McNichols, but McNichols is a 205 pound. 215, man. McNichols is interesting to me. When did he weigh 215? Uh, the last time I had looked, he was he was at 215. We vet that for me. Let me know. Uh, yeah, but, he had two two Atwell on his shoulders on that when that weigh in. <laughs> uh, but like his last couple years in college. Now I know we're we're very far removed from from that, but just want to point out, he had a ton of production on the ground. He's not yes. he's not just a, a satellite back. So when I'm talking about he's the pass catcher, I'm not saying, oh, this is a Darren Sproles. No, this is a player who, if he gets the carries, he could succeed if that if it shakes out that he's uh, you know, gonna see eight to ten carries a week along with the the maybe four targets. Like so I, I'm not arguing with you guys that I'm not I'm going after Peterson in certain positions uh, where where teams need a running back. And in your dynasty leagues? Oh, absolutely. He's out He's there. He's probably on your waiver wire in dyno, so go grab him. We do have another possible spot start here at the running back position. Carlos Hyde for the Jacksonville Jaguars. James Robinson is dealing with a foot injury. We That's don't. Right. We don't know if he will be out. We don't know if he plays this week. We don't know if he's out for multiple weeks. That hasn't been relayed to us yet. But you think that Urban Meyer – <laughs> isn't going to take this opportunity and be like, yeah, Carlos Hyde, this dude that I brought in, he's going to dominate. Like, If James Robinson is not active, even though the matchup stinks against Buffalo, last week after Robinson left, you, you saw Carlos Hyde finish with a line of nine carries for 32 yards and eight targets for six for 40. This is, this is completely a volume play. This is not a, an opportunity of matchup talent. This is just pure volume for Carlos Hyde. Yeah, he, he's going to get the work uh, if James Robinson misses. But every single running back that is not named Derrick Henry, who's played against Buffalo this year, has rushed for 45 yards or fewer. You're I, hoping I need those targets. You, you need the receptions and the targets in a PPR league. I would rather pick up um, someone like Latavius Murray, who's available really? in half of the leagues. Latavius Murray... I would it, rather... It's, it's talking about like... You'd rather be dead than pick up <laughs> Tajay Sharp. That's how I feel about Latavius. I mean, the the Ravens running game, I, I think Latavius Murray, you know, assuming that he is is healthy and back off of the bye week, um, which is a little presumptuous, but I you know, if if his injury is healed up and he's back, he's going to be the starter. Um, Minnesota, Miami, Chicago, kind of a middle of the road uh outlook, and he's the starting running back. So I'm I'm fine. With uh, I would I would rather pick up Murray than than Hyde. And where are we at with uh, like Ty Johnson? He is the backup for the New York Jets. He Michael Carter is definitely the guy. But in the last two weeks, when Mike White came in, it wasn't just Michael Carter seeing a bunch of receptions. Ty Johnson, in his limited work, six targets turned into five for seventy-one and a big time uh, uh, touchdown yeah. reception. So I think that. In a deeper PPR league, Ty Johnson to me is very interesting. I think that was a case, though, of of things went right for the Jets too, and that doesn't happen too often, you know. Like with that level of production, it's, I don't disagree that you could take a dart throw at him, but things right with the Jets in Indianapolis scares me. Okay. On that front, I would stash Jeff Wilson. I know you guys mentioned him earlier, but if there's one thing we've learned from Kyle Shanahan, because I wanted to speak to it for a minute, it's that he will hold injury against you. He just will. He did it to Brandon Ayuk to start the year. And this is the second time that we've had an injury with Elijah Mitchell. So while he's looked great, there is a point where, you know, I, I've, I've made this argument for Debo Samuel in the beginning of the year, the loyalty that he has to certain players on this team. He has it to Jeff Wilson. Right. And so I do think that there is a future in which Wilson is a valuable fantasy contributor the way he was at the end of last year whether that's because of Elijah Mitchell injury, whether that's platooning, that future exists on an offense that can surprise you. You, you get Kittle back, you open up the, the offense a little bit. 
he just needs to be on the back of your bench for when they do bring him back and and we can see him gain relevance potentially. I, I would agree with that. And then the other stash is the the insurance running back. Samaj P. Ryan, Sony Michelle, even Mark Ingram. What about Mark Ingram? Yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask you. I, they I, they I, love that dude. Yeah, I, I, I don't see him as fantasy relevant without a or or startable without an Alvin Kamara injury. But if that took place, then Mark Ingram would be worthy. So all three of those guys should be rostered in, in leagues. We're getting close to the playoff time. Where yeah, and I'll throw out – maybe you are one of those teams you need a running back. You are low on fab, so you're doing your best. It, you're like You don't have the priority this week. Try and get those other guys, but also throw in a – a zero or a one on Jamichael Hasty, the 49ers. Look, Jeff Wilson, I, I like to stash him, but he's not coming back this week. Elijah Mitchell is banged up. Probably going to play, but this is the point where you need to be ahead of the curve where if, if somehow more news comes out tomorrow or Thursday, just put that zero on Jamichael Hasty and put him on the back of your bench Would just, that also just in case. Would that also count for Trey Sermon then? Because if Jeff Wilson and Elijah Mitchell I, aren't, active i think that kyle shanahan is disgusted by trey sermon <laughs> like, I, I look at your face and i want to throw up <laughs> oh, wow we, we don't know why we don't know what trey sermon did wrong in practice uh if, but they i think that if elijah mitchell misses Jamichael Hasty will see a bunch of work. Uh, I mean, uh, we we have seen trey sermon get 19 carries um, i believe Jamichael Hasty was injured at that point so let's talk. Let's talk tight end. Um, let me start it by saying, if Ingram was traded to the Packers, are you interested in Evan Ingram yes. as a? Okay, you are, Jason. Do you agree with that? Yes. Reluctantly, yes. <laughs> did he whisper it through yes. that goatee? I reluctantly <laughs> agree that I would be interested in Evan Ingram. Gross. Oh man, um, you talking about okay. uh, tight end eight on the week? Evan Ingram. Oh, <laughs> Mike has found like, look, you are a lucky man. You did this. You made Mo Ali Cox your start of the week. Yes. He pulls a touchdown in. You Trust make Evan process, Ingram your start baby. of the week. When that touchdown was caught, I was trying to figure out what not Evan Ingram player it was that caught the touchdown, and it was somehow him. <laughs> it was right. uh, it was awesome. <laughs> okay, let's look at uh, tight end candidates to pick up beyond Evan Ingram, which is where we're all hoping to be. Um, the Muth yes. was Luth, baby. Oh, he was Luth. Um, four for 44 and a touchdown, 78% of snaps, no Eric Ebron, Chicago next week. Are we interested in the, I mean, I just sent you guys a stat this week. Big Ben is the worst downfield passer in football other than Jared Goff. Like all of the hope of noodle arm returned to glory. Mm -hmm. It has gone the wrong direction, which hurts Chase Claypool, but it helps a player like Pat Fryermuth because Big Ben is looking He's looking for Najee. He's looking for Deontay on a crosser. And by God, he's looking for the Muth. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think the Muth is very, very interesting. Um, the, the only problem is Chicago's a really tough matchup. And I've, I've paid attention to this because um, the beginning of the year we were targeting Chicago. They were terrible against tight ends last year, and they've completely turned it around. That clearly was a point of emphasis for them. Um, but I, I, I would still pick up and roster and play Pat Fryermuth, seven targets of back-to-back -back games. I just would manage my expectations this week. Would and, you, do and you want he, Dan Arnold over Fryermuth? I would take Dan Arnold over Fryermuth. Ten Muth. targets. Eight, eight for receptions. 68. Yep, exactly. I, uh, I mean, that's what you get when you mess with the postman. So, oh. Oh, let me find it. Yeah. Dude, I, oh, it's on there. The postman lives, man. The postman yes. lives to be a wide receiver for whatever team he lands on. That he lives sure. to deliver. Third most have, routes run among tight ends this guys, last week. Have we considered the fact that maybe the Darnold disappearing act didn't have to do with McCaffrey and it was the postman? Oh, it does time oh. up. It does time up. His I mean, mail stopped arriving. Oh, man. <laughs> package is missing. Delayed. <laughs> All right. But you like Arnold over the Muth? Uh, yes, I agree. And we uh, we talked about Logan Thomas. He may be back here after the bye. Keep an eye on him. If you have an extra bench spot and no tight end, I guess yes, you can. he's worth a stash. And you know what? He's a great player to do the uh, the strategy move of okay, I'm not necessarily picking him up on this week's waivers for any fab, but maybe I'm picking him up Sunday morning. Yes, maybe I'm picking him up yep. picking him up Monday morning. Totally because agree. he's on by. So uh, Tyler Conklin ended up five for fifty-seven. He is always a spot starter, but he's got Baltimore this week. 
Yep. Um, fifth most routes run among tight ends, so worth a look. CJ Uzama returned to normal Uzama levels, four for 33. That is what he does most often throughout his career. Um, so there you go. Yep. Defensive options. My favorite on the week is definitely the Colts. I tried to pick them up last week and stash them to play against the Jets. I don't. Does the Mike White show do put any hesitation into that pickup? None. The Mike White show and the 400 plus yards and the touchdowns is incredible. It's a great storyline. Mike White is not some world beater. He is a a backup quarterback that came in and now you have a full game of tape on him. If you think that the Colts aren't going to watch these checkdowns and have some kind of game plan for him, I, no. And then the week after that is Jacksonville. The Colts are the number one pick up agreed the Colts are two field goals from a much different season you know they they are a competitive team the Patriots are right there with them this week as a great play facing Carolina likely without McCaffrey again the same Darnold experiment I mean the Patriots defense looked really good this past week mm -hmm. on the road Justin Herbert shut down for the most part so the Patriots are a good pickup Dolphins and, against Houston seem like a smash as well yeah the Saints I, I I don't know how they're only thirty two percent rostered. Um, I, I I mean, they I guess the reason is because they were against the Buccaneers and they were probably dropped a lot of places not wanting to play. But against Atlanta with no Calvin Ridley, that offense looks struggling. And the Saints are a great defense; they're mm -hmm. actually really good. Um, then you get Tennessee the next week, and we'll have a that that could be a good matchup. Sands Derrick Henry. We'll right. know more after this week. Full stream ahead. All right. Streaming quarterback options. There are several good ones this week, more than even the ones that we're bringing forth to you. But I'm going to go with Tua against Houston. It's this week's edition of Who is Playing the Texans. Um, the Texans are bleeding fantasy points on a weekly basis. And Tua has, you know, the return of Parker, the involvement of Gesicki. He's done enough in recent weeks to give me confidence against Houston, and um, so I'll go Tua. Uh, my stream of the week is going to be Taysom Hill. There's no guarantee that he will clear concussion protocol and be active, but you're going to have to pick him up today. He's not one of those you can wait on. I think your league is going to, because of the injury, look towards Taysom Hill. He's a mobile quarterback. He had four starts last year. He had four quarterback one finishes. Two times he played against Atlanta last year, so the matchup this week is good. And Atlanta versus mobile quarterbacks this year, they gave up 62 yards to Jalen Hurts. Sam Darnold ran for 66 yards um, last week. So I, I think Taysom Hill's rushing ability, assuming that he is active, I'm willing to pick him up. And like Andy said, there's a lot of good options this week. So pick up Taysom Hill, who I think would be the best option. And then if he doesn't get activated, you could pivot later in the week to uh, someone else. And that's I agree with Jason. Like, Taysom Hill, if he's available, you pick him up because you're streaming him, and then he's he would be their quarterback solution for the the rest of the season. I don't maybe somehow they play Simeon over Taysom Hill. I just I don't see that outcome. And, and Taysom will be great for fantasy football. Got to shout him out again, Carson Wentz. He's playing. He's he's a very strange man because <laughs> you see, like you see incredible football. And then you see the play where he's backed into his own end zone and like maybe he, and he's just trying to avoid the safety, I understand, but giving up the safety would have been a much better outcome than changing hands with the football and just kind of floating it forward, turning it Actually, to... Actually, is, is, is that true? It's not true. I don't think that's true. I, I had people point that out to me and I had to wrestle yeah. with that truth. That the, it, the touchdown was actually the better thing. It was better than the safety, but it was still absolutely not acceptable. Just throw the ball away. Don't don't you know what I mean? Like spike it in the ground, take a take take a penalty. Well, I guess that would have been a safety too. But um, because if they took the safety, then then yeah, the but your Titans defense get the ball. Sure, but you only give up two points, and then your defense has a chance to stop but them. I which, think there was only a minute thirty left, so I think that the actual situation was yeah. like. It, anyway, the uh, the situ the, yeah. the throw was a bonehead move. And, oh, it was ugly. And then the throw in overtime to a triple covered Michael Pittman was a bonehead throw. <laughs> like so, but he's still putting up fantasy points. He's the QB 12, 20 plus fantasy points in five straight games. Like against the Jets, they 
despite what happened in this past week, I'm still targeting them with my fantasy quarterback. Uh, I know Brooksy is over there uh, with the dials. If you remember, there's a Seinfeld episode many years ago where Jerry goes out with this woman, and every time he goes out with her, she's either soup. She looks super pretty, or she looks super ugly, depending on the day. Oh my god! That's the Carson Wentz experience during the game. Is you glance at him and you go, "Oh, he still got something," and then you look back again and you go, "Oh, oh no!" We do um, have a slight update. The Titans, okay. Jason. The Titans have added running back Deontay Foreman to the practice squad. <laughs> um, man, I wish he didn't tear his Achilles back in the day. I think he would have been legit great. He was starting to break out. But Wait, I have breaking news. I have breaking news. Rodney Anderson added to the Tennessee <laughs> Titans practice squad. <laughs> My guys, yeah. Um, by the way, I've made a, a vow. I'm not going to mention him as an actual uh, streaming quarterback ever again, but like Derek Carr, if someone else mentioned him against the Giants, might be okay this week. Derek um, Carr is. So that's Pat Mahomes. Ooh, shut down. No, no, no. But here's here's the thing for Derek Carr: Giants, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Dallas, Washington, Kansas City. Like that's something somebody might point out if they wanted to mention him. Derek Carr. Derek, Derek Carr's probably about to go on a tear. Set to smash? <laughs> yeah. Um, he, yeah. He, he has to come through, but the schedule. But they're not even they're not even him. playing for anything. Oh, wait. They are the number one in their division ahead of the Chargers and Chiefs. Unbelievable. All right. I mean, you can, you can hit that button. I mean, you can send in the car. If you uh, I, I will if have you, to find it. If you want to do it. I'm just send saying. In like, send in the car. All right. All right. Well, we uh, there's a lot going on, a lot to think about. Uh, we want to thank Traeger Grills. We had the privilege, and I do mean privilege, of trying out their new Traeger provisions. <laughs> uh, they are willing to now provide you with food that you can then use your grill to make, which is insane. Uh, it's a unique Traeger experience. You want to do it over and over again. They, uh, I've got a 12-pound Wagyu brisket. That might be my Thanksgiving. I, I, it's unbelievable. Got Mac some and sweet cheese sides there. The, yes, the Collard provision greens. boxes come with everything. Everything they come with your side dishes that you get to pick. They come with the sauces, the brown sugar, the seasonings, the, the seasonings everything. The rubs. It's it's the incredible. butcher paper. I, I already yep. used mine, and I'm ordering more because it's incredible. <laughs> uh, it's it's exceptionally high quality food. You cannot get it at the store. Um, make sure you check it out. You can go to provisions.traeger.com to learn more about the different things they offer because they offer the brisket, but they also have chicken and other stuff. That's provisions.traeger.com. And we want to thank Pristine Auction for being, being the best sports memorabilia site out there, getting incredible gear, signed gear out there, like a signed DK Metcalf jersey that someone got for just... Michael Carter signed jersey, sitting at, look, you want to get in before Michael Carter really takes off? He's got a jersey that's available right now, and the price is sitting at just $50. That auction ends tonight. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit towards your first auction victory. Well, uh, before we shut down, I just wanted to uh, reemphasize my thanks to everybody out there that has been so supportive and helpful as our family navigates a COVID adventure. And um, Jason, as soon as you get your beard grown out let me know and i'll get back in there <laughs> yes, um, yes. as soon as possible but working uh, on it we will be back with another show tomorrow take care everybody that's gonna do it everybody uh get those waivers in get them tight get them right we wish you the best of luck with that and we will see you on tomorrow's episode goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.